I'm Rob from Barefoot Gaming and today we are taking off with our flight sim of the H6 full motion simulator. Let's go! There are a bunch of things to cover here. I'm gonna do my very best to make sure I cover all of it. If you have not seen our H6 racing simulator review, I would recommend checking that out for a lot of the specs, but there were a bunch of questions sent our way because of it. And I wanna make sure we touch on all that. Now I modified the H6. We put on the platforms so that we could actually install a hot ass. I hate calling it a hot ass. It looks like hot ass. I'm gonna call it a hot ass. We've installed the SciTech X52 hot ass okay so that's what's sitting on here now we disconnected the steering wheel but i left it sitting on the rig itself we disconnected the pedals uh, we did install a butt kicker but i'm going to get more on that probably on a different review now we put this through a test of three different flight based games we used ill 2 we used x11 and we used elite dangerous so we have kind of world war ii we've got modern flight and space flight and honestly this thing delivered fantastically the fact that when the plane hits turbulence that it actually shakes up and down when you hit air pockets that it actually feels like it's dropping a little bit you have to keep in mind the plane is not going to flip all the way i mean in game it'll flip all the way over but you're limited to how many degrees 17 degrees i believe is the uh angle of of rotation on the actual h6 but it feels incredible when you're banking and you can actually feel the back end swing out a little bit what i'm going to say is everything felt a little more subtle as far as flight goes when you're racing and you're constantly feeling the ground shake underneath you that is a very different experience when you're flying unless you're hitting turbulence i found in ill 2 turbulence was quite high frequently now with saying all of this the games don't all perform exactly the same what the h6 does is it uses software by sim racing studio and these guys are freaking geniuses they take the output that the game is, is sending and they convert it into actual movement. So they've got a bunch of different devices if you wanna check out our other videos, but in this case, what it does is it actually moves it as the game says it should move. With that being said, you kinda of have to realize that whoever coded the games is gonna determine how much the, the sim is gonna move. Now, the Sim Racing Studio software will let you completely adjust that. You can adjust how smooth it is, you can adjust uh, how fast it moves, you can adjust if you want more pitch, faster pitch, all that sort of stuff. But even when we played, we mostly played on defaults, uh, it felt really, really good. The, the movement was very convincing and it didn't matter if we were flying in, again, a World War II jet or if we were flying like a Cessna or if we were blasting through space. Now I need to mention that we actually moved on the armature to the more extreme setting. There are two holes for all of our driving games. We left it on the inside hole. The reason those holes matter is the further out you go, and there are only two, it lifts everything up and it moves everything significantly more extremely. I have to put a caveat to that, that we found when we moved it to the outside holes, that we were having uh, the front part where your feet sit on was actually hitting the motors on extreme movement. Like if we were crashing, it was hitting the motors. I reached out to DOF Reality on that and they said there is a fix. You have to adjust something uh, on the arms themselves to lift it up a little bit. It can't do that on its own. You're going to have to tweak that prior to using it. And all of our flying games that we did were all done on the more extreme version. That kind of brings me back to a point that I get asked an awful lot about. Now, the motors that have those actuators make noise, but it's incredibly little. Now, I needed to figure out a way to do this test that you could hear how loud this was. And what I did is I took the microphone that I'm using to record this right now, and I laid it right up against the actuators, like right up against. Then what I did is I sat on the chair, right? So I'm, I'm way above and I spoke. So you're gonna hear my voice and you're gonna hear actuator noise. Here's a sample. Okay, so this is me sitting in the cockpit. The shake kit has been disconnected. The butt kicker has been disconnected. So the only noises you should hear are my joysticks moving and the actual actuators moving. So I'm going to take off on the runway right now. Okay, so, and again, I'm flying in X-Plane 11 right now. So this game is more subtle, it's quite, quite smooth, I mean, unless I'm actually catching turbulence and the like. And now I'm going to full on crash. So I'm going to, I don't love doing this in airplanes, but I'm going to dive into the ground, loudest noise coming up. Ugh. And 
that is the sound of the actuators. You can step on any piece of the metal and it'll withhold your weight no problem. Nothing will move, nothing will shift. This frame is sturdy as I'll get out. But you have to keep in mind there is a chair in your way. So you're kind of stepping over a chair in between your joystick. And it's just something you have to keep in mind. It's a bit of a pain to get in and out of. But the pro of that is the fact that everything feels tighter. It feels like you're sitting in a cockpit. The experiences between the flight sims, when I played X11, everything felt so smooth. I had a really hard time capturing gameplay and then overlaying, so I apologize for that. X11 is just difficult for whatever reason to capture. But X11 is crazy smooth. Feeling the bank, nothing was jerky, everything just went so smooth and it felt wonderful. Of course, it felt smooth until I crashed. And again, you'll notice when I was recording audio, I, I crashed a lot because I wanted to see how the actual simulator responded to it. Honestly, I believe the value of the H6 is phenomenal. The fact that this thing is priced anywhere near what it is, is I think great. It actually gives you the feelings that you're moving and it changes the way you play. With flight, if you're, if you're barrel rolling, I, I felt queasy, but that had nothing to do with the motion simulator. That had everything to do with the fact that in VR, I am seeing things spin and spin and spin. I could do a couple barrel rolls, that'd be fine. But I should also mention the fact that this thing requires two separate circuits. Unless you're running 220, if you are running 110 volts, you need two separate circuits to run this. There is a plethora more stuff coming. We've got handbrakes coming. We've got uh, lighting setups for actually adjusting like what your gears are and what the lights are that are happening on the screen. There's lots more stuff coming, so subscribe if you want to see more of this. Like, comment, Honestly, your questions are good. I, if there's something that I'm not covering, I want to help you any way I can. That is it for today. I will talk to you again real soon. See ya.